Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, also known as Nine Mutter Game, and this will be my Vex gear tier list. I will be rating these gears based only on their use as actual gears. Alright, so let's get into it. So the first gear we have is the version 2 84 tooth high strength gear. Overall, I think these are pretty solid gears. Um, you can use them on a catapult very effectively. They're good if you're trying to get a really fast flywheel going. They're also a very good gear to use on like a floor bar lift. Overall, I think I'll give them A tier. Very solid, but you can definitely get by without them. Next up, we have the version 2 72 tooth high strength gear. Um, these gears, again, similar things. You can use them for four bars, catapults, flywheels too, I guess. Although the 72 tooth gears only come in this variant. But just the ratios that you would use a 72 tooth gear on aren't as effective. Like 84 is great if you want high torque, but 72. It does get high torque, but not as much torque, so you're going to be less likely to use it for something. It also has a harder time meshing with the mainstream gears, as it meshes best with the 24 tooth gears and 48 tooth gears, but definitely still a solid gear in the B tier. Okay, next up we have the version 2 60 tooth gears. Now these gears I think are very, very good. Um, you can use them on drive bases, like 360 RPM uses them. Definitely a very solid gear. You can use them for a catapult or flywheel design. I've seen that done before. And then the extra mounting holes is also very nice. So I'm going to go ahead and give these A tier for the same reason as the 84 tooth gears. Now we have the 48 tooth gears. Now these gears, again, only come in the high strength version 2 variant. Um, these gears are also very good. I've used them a couple of times. Um, their main use, I think, is on drive bases, as you can get some really nice RPMs, like 450 RPM, with these gears. So definitely a very solid gear. Again, I think I'll go ahead and give them A tier, because they do have a couple drawbacks of not being able to mesh as nicely um, with some of the other gears, and they're not really great for high torque or high speed scenarios, just because they're kind of a middle size. Then the version 2 high strength 36 tooth gear. This one is also pretty good. Um, but there's not a lot of reasons where you would need this gear in high strength necessarily. Um, really the only thing I can think of is if you were using this on a three-stage catapult, using these on the middle stage. Um, so they're a solid gear, but they don't have a ton of uses. I feel like usually when you're using 36 tooth gears, they're on a drive base, and you can get away with using the low strength version. I think I'll go ahead and give them C tier for that, just because there's not a whole lot of uses other than the catapult where you would really need to use these. Then we get to the 24 tooth high strength gear. These gears, again, there's not a whole lot of uses where you would need to use them. Just the RPMs that work well with them, there aren't a lot of them. Um, these gears are also really heavy and they don't have the holes drilled in. So I'm gonna go ahead and give them D tier. I don't think I've ever used them on my robot specifically. I've seen people use them, but they don't seem to get used that often. Next up is the 12 tooth high strength gear. These gears, they're very, very useful. Anything that you're doing high torque or high speed, you're going to want to use these on as you can use them to get the strongest gear ratios. I also have a very hard time breaking because they're steel, but since their core is hollow, they really don't add that much extra weight. I think I'm going to go ahead and give these S tier just for their uses on so many different things. Like you're going to want these on a catapult, you'd want these for flywheel, you'd want these for any kind of lift. Um, very, very useful gear. Definitely going to want to use those on your robot. Okay, so next up we have the 84 tooth low strength gear. Low strength gears are obviously going to be better if you're using them on something that needs to be very compact, um, like drive base spacing. You can definitely use these. However, the low strength version of the 84 tooth gear is a couple drawbacks. You have to drill out the hole if you want to screw joint them. And the real RPMs that work with them are really only like 257 and 343 on four inch wheels, so they don't really have a ton of uses. Next up is the 60 tooth low strength gear. This is, has some pretty similar flaws as the 84 tooth low strength gear. A couple things it has going for it is 60 tooth gears are more common to use on a drive base um, just because of the different RPMs. But overall, I'm pretty sure you can use high strength gears and mesh them inside the new wheels most of the time. So again, not a whole lot of reasons you're going to want to use these gears. And again, awkward to screw joint because you would have to drill out the center hole. And these gears have really, really weak mounting points. So I'm going to go ahead and give them D tier. I think you're better off just like beveling the edges of one of the newer gears if you have to. 
Now the 36 tooth low strength gear I feel like are a lot more common to use as typically you would use these when you're driving your wheels if you're using 600 RPM cartridges like a ton of ratios use these 257, 360, 300, 450 a ton of ratios use these and you're definitely going to want to use the low strength variant over the high strength variant if you want to get a three hole gap and it's going to make it much easier to get a four hole gap too. So I'm going to go ahead and give these A tier. Um, they're very, very useful on drive bases. Pretty much all of the good rear gear ratios use these. Next up we have the low strength 12 tooth gear. Things are pretty bad. Uh, funny story, I was trying to use them for a claw and tipping point to grab onto the goals and I didn't have any sort of power control setup so I just ran at full speed closing onto the claw and when the claw closed and it couldn't spin anymore, it actually stripped off all the teeth on this gear and I was left with a bald gear. They're very weak. You can't use them in any of the high torque scenarios because they're just going to snap. And you can't use high strength, obviously, because they don't have room for a hole. And then if you're using them in something high speed, I guess you could use them for a flywheel. That's really about their only use that I could think of. But the metal gears will do just as fine. The only thing would be weight savings if you really need it. So I'll give them D tier. I guess they'd be useful for a flywheel, but not much else. Next up, we have this thing. Vex calls it the differential pod, I think. I've never seen anyone use these for differentials. It's just a 36 tooth gear with the hole drilled out so you can't run a shaft through it. I really don't know why anyone would ever want to use these on their robot. Definitely an F tier. Um, worm gear. These are the two worm gear things. Worm gears suck for Vex because you'd use them in really high torque scenarios. But if you're doing really high torque scenarios, then you need to use a high strength shaft. And these only work with low strength shafts. So if you ever use these, you're just going to end up making a Twizzler shaft. They suck. Never use them on a competition robot. Very, very bad. So the bevel gears are pretty bad. I've seen a couple teams use them for things like flywheels last year if they were trying to ratchet them to their intake as well. But overall, you really never want to use these gears. They suck. They just, they're really awkward to work with spacing wise. And they have a super easy time slipping. None of the teams who are competitive with the flywheels actually use these, so I'm going to go ahead and give them F tier. Uh, the teams who used them, there was more of a novelty thing, and it didn't really work that well. Uh, we have a very interesting gear up next. This is the rack gear, which, of course, is crucial if you want to build a puncher mechanism, but they really don't work for much else. Kind of cascade lifts, but cascade lifts usually are not the best option for a VRC lift. However, the rack gears do work very well for what they need to do on punchers. However, their uses are kind of limited. So I'm going to go ahead and give them C tier, um, just because they don't have a lot of uses, but they do work well for what their use is. Next, we have the 84 tooth high strength gear, the version one. And these gears, they're pretty good, uh, very similar reasons as the version two gears. They're good for four bars, they're good for catapults, they're good if you're trying to get a really fast flywheel going. However, um, they do have some drawbacks. Their mounting holes on them are really weird and they're offset, which makes them harder to use. And I would prefer to use the version 2 gear on a catapult or a 4 bar just because of the metal core makes it less likely to have issues, um, less slop. So they're still a solid gear, but they're just not quite as good. These would be better suited for a flywheel or something where you don't have to directly mount a C channel or something to the gear like you would on a 4 bar or a catapult. So I'm going to go ahead and give them B tier. Next we have the version 1 60 tooth high strength gear, um, similar thing as the 84 tooth gear, it's harder to do mounting holes on. These ones are maybe a little bit better, but again, you're usually going to want to use these gears if you have them available, just because they're going to have less slop. Um, these wouldn't be any worse for a flywheel design, but these would be better if you were trying to do a lift or catapult. Next up we have the version 1 high strength 36 tooth gear. Now this gear is extremely similar to the version 2 gear. The only difference is the metal core in it, but I've never actually needed to use the metal core. I've never had these gears snap at all or seen them snap really because uh, you're not using them in super high torque areas like you would the newer ones. So I'm going to give this the exact same version as its version 2 gear. Now finally we have the low strength metal gears. Um, these are kind of a weird place just because you can't use them for high strength things, but that's typically where you would want the metal gears. Like you can't really use these on a four bar or a catapult because you're going to need them on a high strength shaft. Again, they would work for flywheels, but they are definitely considerably better than the plastic gears because you don't have to worry about them stripping. Maybe there would be a couple uses where you'd need them or if you just want the lower profile on a metal tooth, but you definitely don't want to use the plastic ones. So going back through the editing process, I actually think there are a couple things I disagree with on here after doing some further research. 
the 84 tooth version 2 high strength gear I think I did not rate highly enough as this gear is definitely the go-to for catapults or really any kind of lift. Uh, you, if you're doing a lift like 4 bar, double reverse 4 bar, you're going to pretty much be guaranteed to be using these. So I think I rate them a bit too low. Additionally, I think that I also ranked the 36 tooth low strength gears a bit too low, as I underestimated the sheer number of drivetrain gear ratios that these are used for. These are used in pretty much all of the commonly used drive base gear ratios, so I think that I underrated them as these are pretty much guaranteed to be on any competitive team's drive. Another thing that I want to change is I don't feel like the plastic gears are really deserving of D tier when these metal gears are just so much better. Um, even on using a flywheel, I wouldn't trust these gears to ch chip under high speed changes. So I'm going to bump these down to F tier. And the only reason I gave these C tier is because I feel like they were better than the plastic 12 tooth gears. So I'm going to go ahead and give them G tier instead. So these are going to be my final rankings for the gear tier list. If you have any questions or disagreements, feel free to comment them down below. And I'm probably going to try and do another tier list next weekend if I have time. So make sure that you subscribe so that you can get that right away. See you next time.